Hello, this is the Mass Vlog. We finished last episode with the Holy Holy Holy, or Sanctus. Following the Sanctus, the bell rings to alert us that in a few moments Jesus Christ will be here among us in the bread and the wine. But why a bell? In earlier times, when masses were held in Latin and the priest spoke with his back to the worshippers, they could not hear him clearly, so they sometimes lost track of the mass. The bell signals that it's time to kneel for the coming of Jesus Christ among us. The bell also rings during the elevation of the host, and also when people can start proceeding to communion. But let's first talk about the prayer called the canon. It is prayed by the priest, and by these words, the Holy Spirit converts the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. The canon is a Eucharistic prayer, the main prayer of the Mass. The meaning of the word canon is yardstick. Long ago, during the early Christian era, the priest or bishop would use his own words to tell the story of the Last Supper and to consecrate the bread and wine. Some of the early priests had heard the story and prayers of the Last Supper directly from the Apostles. Others heard about it through word of mouth, not always accurately. So in the 4th century, the Church agreed upon a unified wording, an unchanging text which must be spoken in order to have a valid Mass. During this canon, or Eucharistic prayer, the consecration, or transubstantiation, takes place, and for this we call upon the Holy Spirit. This is called epiklesis, from the Greek word epikalio, meaning to call upon. The priest raises his hands and calls upon the Holy Spirit to change the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. The consecration continues by evoking the events of the Last Supper. The priest uses the same words that Jesus uttered when he changed the bread and wine into his body and blood. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. He lifts up the consecrated host, the Blessed Sacrament, so that everyone can look up at Jesus, who is present in the host. The priest genuflects, then continues with the words of Jesus. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We remain kneeling throughout the consecration to express our reverence for Jesus. If someone is unable to kneel, they can show their respect by standing. The priest, after elevating the host and chalice, also kneels briefly in the presence of Jesus. This is not idolatry, because Jesus is truly present. After the consecration, the priest says, the mystery of faith. This is a mystery, not in the sense of an unanswered question, but more like a mysterious truth. We have a miracle here, with Jesus Christ truly present in the blood and wine, but we can understand this only through our faith. Our senses do not help. The bread and wine look and feel just the same as they did before the consecration. The consecration took place through the Eucharistic prayer, the canon of the Mass, and through the words of Christ and the action of the Holy Spirit. What happened is a transubstantiation. We gaze upon the host and the wine, not to see those things, but in order to see Jesus Christ himself. Responding to the priest, the faithful say, We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. But what about the hocus pocus? In fact, it's nothing to do with magic. In the Latin Mass, the words of the consecration, this is my body, sound like this, hoc est enim corpus meum. Because priests said the Mass with their back to the people, uttering the words quietly and in Latin, the faithful could easily mistake the words as something like hocus pocus. After the consecration, the prayer continues. First, we recall Christ's death and resurrection. Then we pray for the leaders and the members of the church, for the dead and the living. The priest ends this prayer by again lifting up the Eucharist and saying, through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Next comes communion, but we'll explore that in the next video.